Alright guys, welcome to Beards Eye Review. This is going to be my spoiler review for episode 1 of season 2 of The Mandalorian. Yes, spoilers all the way through this one guys, so make sure you check out the episode first before you check out my full review. Before we begin, don't forget to like and comment down below, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified whenever I do videos. I do them every single week, well, most of the time it's just shit's going on at the moment. It's just I'm just not as busy as I should be. I apologise for that. I will try and get videos out every single week. So make sure you keep a look out for those. I know what you're thinking, why has he got a random beanie on his head instead of doing his hair up? One, I'm lazy, and two, I'll let you know more about this awesome uh, apparel at the end of the video. 2020 has been a really, really crap year, and it's been crap for everybody, but the one shining light that we have now got is the new season of The Mandalorian, and they kicked in with their premiere episode, Chapter 9, and it was all kinds of awesome. Before we go deep into spoilers, I, I just want to say that the episode itself didn't really do much for character development, it kind of just was the kind of paint by numbers kind of premiere episode, but it was more of a means to an end and just a nice way to kind of grab you and hold you tight and get you back into this universe and go, everything is going to be okay. And that's pretty much what this episode did. Yes, it didn't necessarily push with new groundbreaking stuff, but it comfortably got you back into the episode, it gave you loads of fan service, loads of easter eggs, and awesome moments that will go down in history as one of the most epic things that has ever happened in Star Wars. So it really did shine quite bright even though it didn't push too far into new territory. There is a lot of people out there moaning and complaining about fan service and easter eggs and stuff and I really, I always struggle with this. Why do people moan about that? What's the problem with fan service? What's the problem in making your fans enjoy something by giving them some stuff that they want and then some little easter eggs for us to find and talk about and speculate and all that kind of stuff and why not? Why not pepper your episodes with that? I don't see what the problem is. I get the fact that people want to have like brand new things happen and everything but we are. The Mandalorian is a new thing. It's still doing its own thing. It's just peppering it with bits and bobs that we know around the universe. With it being such a rich universe as the Star Wars universe, probably the richest universe in in cinema history, why wouldn't you pepper it with little fan service moments and easter eggs and spots and stuff? I don't see what the problem is there. I think people, personally, I think people are just nitpicking because they have to nitpick. Let's kick in with the intro. The intro was epic. I don't know what planet it was. It was a new planet. It's the only new planet you've seen in this episode because the rest of the episode takes place on Tatooine. But the setup is brilliant. It's all that bit on the trailer where he goes into that boxing room where the Gamorians are kind of fighting and everything. He gets into a fight with these guys, takes out all these guys and everything. Then when Yoda kind of hides himself away and he takes all these guys out, that's all awesome. He takes down the main guy, hangs him upside down and said, I need to find another Mandalorian to help me get this child back to his, his people. Where is the nearest one? And he says, Tatooine. And all of, straight away, all of us nerdy Star Wars guys went, oh my God, it might be happening. It might be happening. We know this. And then he left him to die and off he goes to Tatooine. What an intro to the new season. So yes, the rest of the episode is on Tatooine and it mainly focuses on him uh, taking down this massive uh, crate dragon, um, which is the only thing we've ever seen is it of a, a skeleton in A New Hope. This one is a lot, lot bigger, and it's basically terrorising um, uh, a Mos Eisley kind of area. It's kind of like, like an old western kind of town. It's a kind of forgotten, but it's a lot smaller, and it's, it's, like, it's like out east, I think, somewhere. And it's about going there and taking down this dragon. And it, it is a lot of fun, and the way they kind of pepper things in with a certain character and build it up, is perfect. The first time you think you see Boba Fett, amazing. They, they nail this so well with saying that he's a sheriff of this town and in he comes and straight away you go, oh, oh, oh my god that's Boba Fett's armour, but that is not Boba Fett. It's like, you can just tell straight away that's not him, but it gives you confirmation more or less he's alive. He must be alive because the armour doesn't just get coughed out of the Sarlacc pit by itself, he comes out with that armour, so he must be alive somewhere. And then we find out that it's this uh, actor called Timothy Oliphant, which I don't really know very well, but I've heard he's a very good actor. Um, and he plays a character called Cobb Vanth, I think, basically the sheriff of this area. Apparently it, it was a character in the expanded kind of part of the universe where they brought into canon. And he goes in to explain how he gets Boba Fett's armour, he gets it from Jawas and all this kind of stuff. Really interesting, I like that, and it kind of uh, has a nice dynamic of... Basically, Mando wants this armor because it's Mandalorian armor and he doesn't deserve to wear it. Um, and it's all part of the deal to get the Sand People and the people of this town to team up to take down this dragon so they can all be happy and move on with their lives. Everything kind of works together. It has a very kind of Jaws feel to it where people have to team up to take down this big behemoth. 
And I quite like that kind of little nod. Another thing that definitely confirms it wasn't Boba Fett is the fact that he's pretty much straight away takes his helmet off. You're like, well, Mandos don't do that, so definitely not him. I do like the fact as well, the speeder bike that um, Oliphant's character is playing. It looks like Anakin, one of Anakin's little pod things, one of his engines for his pod racer. It might not specifically be his, but it looks a lot like it, and he's made it into a speeder. That's cool. Again, yeah, nice little kind of fan service moment there. We do see another side of the Tusken Raiders, because we've been pushed to these horrible hunting kind of raw characters that just go around and destroy people and hunt and just, they're just animals really. And we see this on the side that they're not necessarily as bad as people say, they're trying to live their lives and they obviously they come to blows at certain points with this town and it's about teaming them up together and I really like the dynamic there of trying to see another side of the coin for these kind of characters that we know so well. R5 makes his appearance again, I love the fact that this fan service of Bring the Bat, he's still alive! He's, I thought blue casket, that's probably the end of him, but no, he's there with this uh, the war from the last season with the pit droids and everything. I love that they brought, brought him back into it. Brilliant. I will say one thing, Baby Yoda doesn't really do anything of note in this episode, but he is adorable, still adorable, even when he's just hiding inside that little jar. Adorable, there's nothing really going on with him in this episode, but he's there to look adorable and it works perfectly. I do like as well when they're heading out to the dragon, they're all in single file to hide their numbers. Nice little callback there as well. A quick thing I'll say as well, you can tell straight away there is more of a budget behind this. There's a little bit more CGI going on here than there was in the last season. It is a little bit wider in scope as well, which is great. But everything else that they've done as well with all the practical effects that they did in the last season, it's all back again. And I'm glad they always strike a really good balance with all this new Star Wars content. And I'm glad that they're doing it here. So pretty much the rest of the episode is taking down this crate Dragon. It's absolutely massive crate Dragon, blowing him up with explosives, teaming up to get this done. And it works, you know, it, you know, it takes it takes a little bit of time, and it doesn't go exactly the way they want it to, but the finale moment of it, of basically uh, Mando going inside and then just electrifying and blowing it up with the Banther inside with all the explosives, all brilliant. Tusken Raiders get the pearl thing they're after, which is another thing that apparently was in the Expanded Universe that kind of brought that in as well. Everybody's all at peace, everybody's happy, everyone can move on with their lives, and then that finishes up with him getting the Mandalorian armor because he's earned it and there's a nice new relationship he's built with his character and I hope we see more of Timothy Oliphant's character, I think it's Cobb Vance if I remember correctly. Uh, I li I'd like to see more of his character so hopefully we will at some point. Um, and that's pretty much the end of the episode, save for one final moment which, oh my god I was just geeking out so much at this. As he's driving off on his speeder bike you just come and pan away and you can see the two twin sunsets and a man standing on the ridge spins round and it is Boba Fett. He is 100% alive. He just turns the camera and walks away. Tamira Morrison, the guy that played Django Fett, is now playing Boba Fett. Uh, as rumours he might be playing uh, Commander uh, Rex as well, uh, which I think will be great. Uh, but yeah, it's Boba Fett's alive. Awesome moment. I'm so looking forward to seeing what happens here, what kind of altercations they'll get into. Will they team up? Will they be against each other? I literally cannot wait to see what they're going to do with this and I love the fact that we've kind of just kicked straight in with it in the season. It's like, we're not going through the season constantly, not paying attention to stuff going, oh, well, when's Boba Fett going to come? When's he going to come, come, come here or there or there? Go, no, let's kick straight in. Boba Fett's alive. Let's get this episode out of the way to show that he's alive. We can move forward from there. Perfect way to get us back in. Everybody's hyped and we're just so happy that Boba Fett, one of the most beloved characters of this universe, someone that got it, didn't get a justified death in any way, we now get that second chance because of Star Wars and Disney and Jon Favreau and all the guys involved, we get Boba Fett again with another run and I'm all over it. I can't wait. Overall, guys, this was a great episode to kick us back into this uh, series. We all love The Mandalorian. I'm so happy that we're back again and we get a little bit of a pick-me-up for what a crap year this has been so far. Uh, what a great way to start things off. As I said, not a lot of character development, not a lot of pushing forward about what's going on. It's mainly just based on Tatooine to kind of get us to the point where we need to get to with Boba Fett and confirming that he's alive and all those little moments that we kind of lead up to it. All of it worked fine, great fan service, great easter eggs, everything worked fine there. Although, you know, say the story kind of suffered a tiny bit for it, we've got so many other episodes to kind of get through to kind of push forward with that. Let's get this bit out of the way for early and get hyped for the fact that Boba Fett's back. I'm looking forward to the next episode next week, I cannot wait for it. 
it's a great start. So my beanie, my beanie is the Glory Collective. I've mentioned them quite a few times before on my other videos. Uh, they've got a sale on this weekend, uh, a big Halloween sale. So make sure you check out those and you'll get 40% off. Links in the description. You can get gear like this. You get hats, t-shirts, hoodies. Uh, there's prints out there. They're, they've got loads of other stuff coming. They've got a brand new line that have just dropped as well. It's awesome stuff. And uh, just make sure that you go there. They've got a massive sale at the moment. So go and pick it up because it's awesome stuff. So that's what I thought of The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1. What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to find me on social media, any of these, all links are in the description. And I'll see you soon.